going okay so thank you everybody as i said we're the y1 feedback project and the team is here today i'm Lisa o'regan from anuth university we've born a far from dcu mark brown from dcu and more mcguire from dkit and apologies to nuna harding from ait she's sick today but she's planned to be here okay so um the project um uh, where did we start okay so um, what we wanted to do was directly respond to the concern around feedback in first year. So successive ISI reports showed that um, students in first year um, quite often or said almost 70% of students only sometimes or never receive feedback in first year. Okay? So that's why, this, that's why we went for this project, okay? So as a group, we came together. So it's a multi-institutional collaboration, and it's a two-year project. So we started out in January uh, 2015, and we've got about another semester of implementation to go, and we'll be finishing up at the end of January. So what do we want to do? So obviously, we wanted to respond to the concern, but in practical terms, we want to enhance feedback practice in undergraduate programs, okay? And how we wanted to do that was, was by identifying approaches that would work for first year, okay? But also to develop case studies of those then, case studies of best practice, and to share those out nationally, okay? So how have we been doing is what everyone wants to know. Okay, before we go any further, this is the full team, and, uh, just so that um, not everyone could be here today. Okay. So, our first job, what did we set out to do? Well, our first job was to see um, what's going on. We wanted to see um, what was actually happening with feedback in first year across our institutions. So we looked at current practice of staff, and we looked at the current experience of students across the four institutions. Okay, so the study has been published, and there are some copies here. I wish I could have carried enough for one for everyone in the audience, but unfortunately, I'm not that strong. So we have a small few, but you can get them online. Okay, so what did the, what did the study find? Well, first and foremost, it found that the experience of first years is inconsistent, match, uh, matching the national, um, I suppose, findings, okay? So, you can see here, it really varies. The repeated phrase we found was, depends on the lecturer, okay? So, work to be done. From a staff perspective, key challenges included large groups, okay? Um, but also, it was around um, st um, that students, our staff felt that students were only interested in the grade, not the feedback, and that there were challenges around student engagement with feedback, okay? So, um, first job done, we, um, and our publication is here. Okay, um, next job. Okay, so we had seen what was happening. We wanted to look at the literature, see um, what was the literature saying, what was going on elsewhere, and um, we completed that study and we have published it, our synthesis of the literature. So what does this document look at? It looks at contemporary perspectives on feedback. It looks at feedback in first year. Particularly, we looked at transitions literature and what we could learn from that in terms of feedback approaches. Um, then, um, we also set out to look um, at features of effective feedback, looking at other projects such as REAP, um, um, and then identifying what approaches, what feedback approaches work for first year. Um, and then we looked at technology. How can technology help in these? So these are the key areas that the, um, the literature looks at, and I'd encourage you to go look at it, and you can find it on our website. Okay. So, um, just to say that both of these documents um, have, or both these reports have been downloaded uh, quite regularly from our website. We estimate about 300 downloads each, okay? And um, we have got some really good feedback on the, uh, on the documents. And for example, David Carlos, leading uh, writer on feedback, has complimented our work on this area. So, we were really chuffed about that, <laughs> as you can imagine. Um, okay, so. Our next job, we had said we would look at identifying a kind of a conceptual framework for feedback or something we could work from. What that evolved into was we have identified from both studies um, a set of features of effective feedback for first year. Okay, um, and these are the guiding features for our case studies and for our work and on the second phase of work. So um, I'm not going to read through them. You can see them, but I will comment on a few of them. Okay, so first and foremost, we're looking at feedback beyond just feedback within assessment. Okay, and that was an evolution, an evolution within our project also. Crucially, we're looking at ways to support students' transition. So the embedding of student assessment feedback literacies, students don't always recognize feedback or know what to do with it. So it's important to build it into whatever approach you're doing. The so fostering a student competence and belonging, again, key to student transition and retention. Um, a cornerstone of our project is around dialogic feedback, okay? 
between teachers and peers, between peers, but also about who begins the dialogue, okay? Changing that up. It doesn't always have to be the teacher who begins that dialogue. Crucially as well, it's about not just feedback, but feed forward. And many of our case studies are looking at embedded feedback, flipping feedback, that is. Instead of, uh, are in a way, trying to combat um, the effects of modularization, um, looking at ways which you can embed feedback um, through, through the module, ongoing ways, or even through the assessment. So a key way of doing that is multi-stage assignment. Um, we are looking at how we can leverage the potential of digital technologies and therefore we see um, the embedding of digital literacy skills within any approach as very important. The next one is really about, I suppose it's the holy grail of feedback, it's about adopting a coordinated and programmatic approach to feedback, okay? Easier said than done, no one seems to have cracked it yet, but certainly it is what we are, we are aiming for. And these features together, we would hope, would support students in becoming self-regulated learning, okay? And in helping them to make judgments about their own work. So these are, I suppose, features or high-level <coughs> principles which are guiding us. But what practical things um, can you do to make this happen? So we also identified a number of feedback approaches for first year, and these are found in our synthesis of the literature. And these are the types of approaches that we that uh, support those features, but which we are also um, developing case studies of. Um, just to say that in many cases, the case studies blend these um, approaches together. Um, I won't go through them. Um, just to say that while some of them may seem or may be things that you're well familiar with, from our study, we found that many of them were um, not used highly. For example, very low use of exemplars, ru rubrics and marking guides in first year um, was what we found within our study. Um, the use of technology generally was very low okay, in, in feedback, high instances of people um, getting their students to submit via technology, but that's where the technology ended, okay, so um, we're, we're trying to find ways um, where it could be used more. Okay, so um, they were our first, our phase one um, outputs, and we have a, our, our, I suppose, objectives, and we have achieve, achieved those. Phase two was all about um, taking this and putting it into practice, okay? So what we have done is that uh, through various ways, such as information sessions, staff development activities, we have um, began working with academic partners across the four institutes, okay, um, on different areas. Um, each uh, case study uh, works with a dedicated project for liaison, liaison where they get support in each of the aspects of the, uh, of the case studies they're working on. Um, and just to say that the team takes a holistic approach in looking at both the assessment and feedback. It's not just looking at the feedback area. So um, we set out to um, deliver 16 case studies. At the moment, we have uh, about 27. We have 14 case studies uh, completed on implementation and 14 reports in, uh, in, uh, in development or at stage one. Um, and we have 13 cases, our case studies, which are actually in implementation this semester. Okay, and uh, so we will be finishing up those. They will have evaluation stages done by December, and write-up will be in January. Um, so we, in total, we have 36 academic partners across 18 disciplines with class sizes ranging from 10 to 17, or 750, 750. So as you can see, we've got a wide range of subjects and uh, class sizes. Okay, so... I'm not going to go through, through these, uh, through these. <laughs> okay, I said that the wrong way, um, but this is a sense of the type of case studies we are developing. Um, so you can see from here there is a wide range of approaches. Um, for example, flipping feedback, multi-stage assignments, you've got uh, screencasting, rubrics, uh, you've got real-time feedback, um, you heard about UniDoodle today, we're actually working with them on a case study as well. And you can see as well we've got a wide range of a um, uh, of disciplines, social care, politics, uh, first years, the library, um, and uh, also online programs as well. So a real mix, so hopefully there'll be something for everyone to learn from. Okay, so you can look more at those later, but down to, I suppose, the impact and where we hope to go. I suppose at the stage we're at, we have another semester to go and uh, we are looking about how we hope we will have impact. We have some impact already, but we would see that growing in the next stages and certainly even more in the year after our project when, it, when uh, things move out further. 
I suppose the key thing about our project, or what we wanted to do, was to raise awareness both with individuals and institutions around the importance of feedback, timely feedback, quality feedback, um, but also about the contemporary perspectives of feedback, okay, and different ways of looking at it, not just one way, but two way, um, you know, and that the student is an active partner in that. Um, I suppose another key impact that we wanted to have was to contribute to the scholarship of teaching and learning on feedback, and I think we, ha we have done that, and there is evidence of that impact al already. I suppose, crucially, the project wants to make an impact around the capacity around feedback and technology-enhanced feedback. Um, even in the numbers of our case studies, we can see that there is impact in our local institutions already, and we, that will go further when the case study reports are um, shared uh, more widely. I suppose at a basic level, we also want to inspire others to try new things with uh, with feedback. And I suppose uh, it's kind of like what the last speaker was saying in terms of uh, seeing that someone else tried it and it didn't blow up is indeed encouragement to us all. Um, and I suppose overall, we um, for the team ourselves, um, it was about building our expertise in the area. And I think certainly we would all agree that we, that we have over the course of, of the uh, of the project. Um, Okay, so impact so far. So we do have a Twitter account and we have about 171 followers. Please follow us if you have not followed us already. Um, in terms of our website, our website, uh, we've got about over 5,000 users and about 9,233 uh, views so far. We would see that the, the role of the website will, um, I suppose, grow as we move closer to our symposium and towards the end of the project and afterwards when the case studies are shared in it. So at the moment, uh, so the majority of our case studies or all our case studies will be posted in time for our symposium. Um, just to say in terms of dissemination, we've worked at local levels, um, I suppose trying to raise awareness of the project and feedback at uh, various committee levels such as faculty, TNL committee and quality and we've made presentations there. I suppose um, within our own TNL units, we have tried to integrate feedback within our existing TNL programs. So, for example, one initiative was called Feedback Fridays, where there was a series of 12 workshops dedicated to different, different aspects of feedback and technology enabled feedback. Um, what we've also tried to do is based on the literature studies we've done, the studies we've done, uh, and the landscape study we've done, is to embed those within the existing accredited programs. So, adding um, uh, Le lectures and workshops on uh, feedback and contemporary perspectives on feedback uh, within those. Um, we've also contributed to other workshop series such as What Works and Why with uh, workshops in each of the other institutions. More widely than, say, a local level, um, we have tried to disseminate nationally. Um, so you can see here a number of conferences that we have presented at. Um, notably, CEDA, we noted during the summer, and this wasn't just a presentation, but also a workshop where we got feedback on our features and approaches um, from other educational developers in the area, which was really, really uh, valuable. Um, the team uh, just uh, recently, we just got a paper accepted at AskLight uh, as well, so we'll also be presenting there. Um, I suppose. Um, I suppose further impact. Our evidence of our impact is uh, we have begun to be invited to, uh, or we've been asked to go other places to give presentations around feedback, which is nice. So we gave a seminar in Eden over the summer. Again, this was a workshop style where we got feedback as well from the educational developers in Ireland on um, our work to date, which was very useful as well. Um, we presented the DCU Teaching and Learning Day. We've been invited and upcoming the IAT Assessment Day, and also we'll be uh, presenting at the University of Bath Assessment and Feedback Day in February. So um, um, all of these people saw us either present at EdTech, have seen our reports or um, our SADA, CEDA, um, so um, evidence of impact there. Um, I suppose more widely in Australia, a similar project has just been funded. Um, they're also looking at feedback case studies. Um, it's called Feedback for Learning, Closing the Assessment Loop. Um, Michael Henderson and Monash is leading that. Um, we have begun a collaboration there. Um, uh, they are actually reusing some of our questions from our landscape study, and I'm a member on their reference group for the project, and we'll be meeting them in uh, November also to see where we can build that collaboration. Um, I'm also uh, contributing to the National forum assessment project um, our big dissemination though is going to be this enhancing feedback in first year our Y1 feedback symposium so you heard it here first Friday the 27th of January please put it in your diaries and take this as a personal invitation
okay? I don't see people at their calendars, <laughs> please. Okay, I meant it. <laughs> I should see a big upsurge in following. So, 27th of uh, January, I hope you'll be there because you'll find out loads more about our case studies. Um, so that is us. Um, just to say, a lot of work has been done on that already. We do have some confirmed speakers, so just to, I'm not gonna tell you everything, but we do have Tansy Jessup, uh, who will be coming, and we have David Nicholl, and there is more, and most importantly, our case study participants will be presenting on the day. So you'll get to see the people who've been doing loads of work on the ground, and they're gonna be sharing their real experience with you. So uh, it, will be, it will be good. Um, it better be now, or I'll be in trouble. This is being recorded, isn't it? <laughs> okay, impact. Um, okay, uh, this is the, I suppose, the more difficult in way at this point to say, but we do see evidence of impact at a different level for our stakeholders. In terms of staff, we can certainly see in terms of knowledge and skills and their, their confidence level in trying new, uh, new uh, feedback approaches. Um, and I suppose I really do want to stress it's about the feedback approaches rather than the technologies. The technologies really have become secondary to this project and in a way it has become more of an, it is an educational development project rather than an e-learning project. So, um, and, uh, and that has been, uh, I suppose, uh, somewhat of a, of a change from the original. I suppose key, we have had people last semester who tried uh, things who are writing up case studies, who are teaching again next semester in the same module and are going to redo or keep using those approaches. Okay, so um, it, it is having an, an impact. In terms of the student experience, we would hope um, that we will have impact here. There is um, um, evidence to date within the case studies that have been completed. Students are very positive about the experience. In some cases where there was only some sort of assessment, students are now getting feedback on an ongoing basis. So this is a change. Um, I suppose they're also experiencing a greater variety of feedback, audio, video, online. These are all changes. Um, I suppose, and uh, we will be uh, working on a get the most out of feedback initiative this semester where we're promoting how to get feedback, where to get feedback, and how to use your feedback. Um, project team, I suppose for us, I think we'd all say, we're all a bit, look over them, we're all a little bit wiser than we were at the start. I would say that personally, that I know a lot more about feedback. Feed forward now. Um, I suppose we uh, certainly, uh, we have built our expertise here. Um, and I suppose in the wider aspect of things, just in terms of institutional collaboration, I've learned so much about how DCU works, uh, um, IoT works, you know, it is so different. And, uh, you know, in ways I wish we'd known it at the start, we would have, you know, we would have made some change, you know, we would have, uh, not, not only changes, but we would have known more. Um, but also just even in terms of national project expertise, it's been a great opportunity for all of us and we really appreciate it. I suppose in terms of practice and systems, in terms of the impact, our aim from the start was to use what we have better. We've made a consistent effort not to be, and me particularly, lured by these new tools that might be very expensive, and to try and use better what we have. And we're really trying to use our VLEs and the free tools that we have um, to, do, uh, to, do, to do what we want to do. Um, we're also working to integrate what we have learned and to make recommendations into other aspects of TNL. Search, uh, such as programmatic reviews, um, and uh, we will be making wider project recommendations at the end to our institutions. Um, okay, sustainability. This is a really hard one to crack. So what we all we can do is hope, I suppose, in one way, and work hard to ensure we have sustainability. It was at a conference, and uh, uh, it was uh, someone speaking from the Tester project, and they were saying, we just got noted as being one of the most sustainable projects ever funded. And they were like, but we have no idea why. So with a project like that, that can, that can say that, you know, so it's just to say, this is a hard one to crack. But we're working hard to, to you know, do our best in this area. I suppose the key one for us is around, we are focusing on the features of effective feedback and on the approaches and not the, um, the, uh, the technologies because this is sustainable. Technologies will come and go, however, the approaches that work will last, okay? And that we're really pu pushing that. And that's why we, we, we spend more time than we anticipated on the literature study and on the other studies, so um, putting our efforts in there. I suppose the other thing is in that with everything we do, we are really trying to focus on quality outputs and the way we work with academic partners and the support and energies we put into that. Um, we're really trying to ensure that each, ca each case study um, you know, gets the support it requires and will be a good <coughs> case study for the sector to look at. 
overall, all our outputs at the end and the additional resources that we will create from those will be available on our website and will be under Creative Commons. Um, and I suppose for ourselves in terms of sustainability, we're already talking about what we'll do next, particularly in the areas of student engagement and feedback and programmatic assessment. Okay, so um, more to come with this one. Perhaps maybe six a year d down the line after the project, we'll be, we'll be able to maybe share more concrete things on this one. So, finally, thank you so much for listening. I appreciate that so many of you stayed, considering <laughs> it's been a long day. And to leave you with this, please save the date. Please come. It will be a good day, and you will find out so much more about the project. <laughs>